Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders board. Mitchell Renz here from Chat Sports, ready and eager to answer all of y'all's questions. If you don't already know, everything that you see on today's show was filmed when we went live on Tuesday. If you don't know, we go live every single Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. First one rolling in here from NYX Toxicity. I just received my dose boot. Really appreciate it, fam. Also, Rookie of the Year, Aiden O'Connell will pop off. I'll tell you this. You want a sneaky, sneaky, under-the-radar bet for Offensive Rookie of the Year? You put 10 bucks on Aiden O'Connell. Jeremy, just look. Plus 7,500 odds. You win 750 bucks. If he does end up playing, sure, that means bad things for Garoppolo. I've seen crazier things happen in sports. Let's go to Patrick B. For those that watch this show a lot, this could be a guy ready and ready to go for Mount Raidermore. He's getting close. Here are some shots for the dudes. Any news from the wide receiver room? Curious how they are gelling and Mayer with the tight ends. Well, first off, Michael Mayer looks like he is going to be the dude. One of the Raiders players that I was talking to said that he has the potential to be the best tight end in the NFL. The reports out there are indicating that as well. People that are the size of Mayer, and it's not just the height. Like He's 6'4", but when you look at him, he's so broad. So his ability to block, his, his ability to catch, he's going to be a big-time impact player. And then at the wide receiver room, I know Philip Dorsett made a really good catch on Tuesday. Uh, Cam Sims continues to get a lot of concentration around him. But besides those two names, I haven't heard all that much. Well, Trey Tucker, I talked about him last week, also has been very impressive, very quick uh, this offseason. Let's go to Killer Cruising. Speaking of boots, what's going on? I'll try to be there Saturday early. I want to kick it with you guys. I'll be your Uber. What time are you guys landing? So we land at like 6.30 a.m. We land in Las Vegas, 6.30 a.m., and then we got to jet around to a few different places. We're going to have to potentially go to our um, hotel, and then we have to go to set up at Barcode Burgers. We're going to be going to Allegiant Stadium. I'm trying to get there somewhere around 10 a.m. So, Killa, Killa, Killa if you want to you wanna hang out with us during the day, you want to be the Uber driver, I'm, uh, I'm all about it. If you don't know what we're talking about, Juggs and I are going to be in Las Vegas this weekend. Saturday, we're doing a hot wing contest against Jermaine Illuminor at Barcode Burgers from noon to 3. But I, Chug and I are going to be wandering around Las Vegas. So if you see us, give us a shout out. I think you're going to wear your Chugs jersey. I don't know what jersey I'm going to wear yet. Let's go to another one rolling in here from Patrick B. I think our defense is going to surprise the league. I believe your D-line will be one of the best in the league. I think you mean our. It only makes the secondary better when the front four gets to the quarterback. I mean, I've said this before where the Raiders have the possibility of being the worst defense in the NFL, they also have the possibility of being a defense that does surprise a lot of people. If Neil Farrell Jr. steps up, can be a solid defensive tackle. If Bilal Nichols is better in year two, we know what we're going to get out of Crosby. Chandler Jones goes back to being a pro bowler. Tyree Wilson, fully healthy, can be a premier edge rusher in the NFL. Devon Diablo, good reports from him so far. Javon Merrick, the reports around Merrick have been very good this offseason. Then you got Marcus Epps, like... This team, Nate Hobbs apparently looks great. This Raiders defense does have a lot of upside, but when you have so many unknowns, it does leave people to question. And I've questioned a lot, but I do think that there is a lot of upside here. Let's go to Sir Chai. Some of our UDFAs are better than our draft picks. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I just think a lot of times people, when they look at certain players, like they look at the draft picks as the draft picks, and then they look at the UDFAs as the UDFAs. I also know that sometimes the under-the-radar players do get a lot of hype. The one player that continues to get his name brought up to me is Adam Plant Jr., and I do think he's going to be competing for a legit top 53 spot. His dad was a former NFL player. I've been texting with Adam Plant Jr.'s father. Really cool guy. And a lot of times when you have somebody who's been in the league before, they can kind of help you know, groom you, make sure you're doing the right things to be able to make that jump from college to the NFL. And from what it sounds like, Plant's been catching the eyes of Chandler Jones. He's been catching the eyes of Max Crosby, a few other under-the-radar players, and a lot of the coaching staff. Let's go to this one. Rolling in here on today's mailbag, coming in from Chris. What do you expect from Bilal Nichols this season? I expect a major bounce-back season 
for Nichols. So last offseason, here on the Raiders Report, we told y'all that Nichols had a torn meniscus. Technically, when we went out actually to our Jonathan Hankins competition last season, had a source come up to me and said, hey, Bilal Nichols tore his meniscus. Don't break the news to anyone. Just say that he injured his knee. Didn't participate at all during the entire offseason. I was told that it really took Nichols to, until like November until he felt that he was back to like legit playing shape. And if you think about it, there's a difference between being in shape and then being in football shape. And then when you're a defensive tackle, it's even tougher to get going. As the season went on, Nichols got better and better and better. I do expect a pretty solid season from him this upcoming season. So how about this? This is going to be the pin comment, Jugs. I'm glad that you went with this one. What is going to be your confidence level in Bilal Nichols? I want you to scale it from me from 1 to 10. 1 being you're not confident at all in the Raiders' second-year defensive tackle. Signed him in free agency last offseason. Played with the Bears. 1 to 10. 1 being not confident at all. 10, you're very confident. My answer is going to be after this YouTube ad break. My answer here on Bilal Nichols and the confidence level, I'm going to give it a 7. I liked him a lot. I think he can end up being a pretty solid player, and the more talent you put around him, it's the less pressure on him. So Byron Young, looking at you. Neil Farrell Jr., looking at you. Crosby, Chandler, Tyree, I'm looking at you as well. Speaking of DTs, James L. Mitch, any interest in Sue or Linval Joseph? From what I understand, no. And the Raiders seem to be very confident in their defensive tackle room. Like, Neil Farrell Jr. has really opened up some eyes. They're impressed early on with Nesta Jade Silvera. I've heard nothing but glowing reviews from Byron Young. Bilal Nichols, he's going to have a bounce back season. They, they have the relationship with Adam Butler. They have the relationship with John Jenkins. The only DT that I haven't heard anything good of a thing about, Matthew Butler. So in terms of Endomigan Sewer, Linval Joseph, my answer to this is probably going to be a no from DT for the Raiders. Next one, we're on in here from Adrian. Any news on the cornerbacks, Mitch? How are they holding up? Nate Hobbs looks legit, like a like a legit cornerback one. Duke Shelley continues to be pretty impressive. Last week, I talked about a report that I was told in regards to David Long Jr. that he could be the surprise player that doesn't end up making the 53-man roster. This team likes Sam Webb a lot. I would be willing to bet a substantial amount of money that Amik Robertson doesn't make the Raiders 53-man roster. Tyler Hall is more than likely going to be the starting inside slot corner if the season started today. But don't sleep on Ja'Cory and Bennett. He's another name to keep in mind to be a starter at slot. Let's go to David Ruiz Jr. What have you heard about Byron Young that the Raiders have been extremely impressed by him. When you think about the fact that you come from Alabama, Crimson Tide, Nick Saban, I would say that that's the program that gets you the most pro-ready, and it sounds like he's just going in stride. Like you saw last year, Neil Farrell, need a, need a little bit of a learning curve. Matthew Butler, there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve. From the reports from coaches and the few players that I've talked to, it sounds like this guy's ready to play in the NFL right away. Now, again, you know, I made a joke last week because I heard all the hype around Aiden O'Connell, and I was like, well, Aiden O'Connell probably looks so damn good because he's going up against Brian Hoyer and Chase Garbers, and you can maybe make the same argument for Byron Young, but I, I, I'm expecting some pretty good things here from Young considering what I've heard thus far. To make sure you never miss anything around this team, if you love the Raiders, if you're the type of fan that's watching Raiders content in the middle of June, then you bleed silver and black. Subscribe for free Raiders videos all year long. We don't take any days off. Why? Because the nation doesn't take any days off. And if you're a new subscriber, I promised I'd give some shout-outs here on the show. Shout-out to Summer Schaefer, Luna Luna, Eduardo Sanchez, Scotty Tuhati, and Junior Lopez. If you are a loyal watcher here, take this link down below. Send it to a friend. Let's go to Rebel Montana. Mr. Tom Grossi is going to visit Allegiant Stadium on June 26th as part of his stadium tour for charity. Can we get Raider Nation to show Mr. Grossi how we get down? I mean, if you guys are going to be around in that area, hell yeah. Show them how you get down, man. Get wild. Let your hair down a little bit. I'm, I'm down to get down. Let's go to Aggressive Master Raider. How many games does Hemi G play this year? Does O'Connell finish the season as a starter? I will continue to say that my number for him is 12 and a half over under. If Garoppolo can play 13 games, I actually think that that's pretty solid for this team. Does O'Connell finish the season as a starter? I don't know. 
but I do think that he more than likely ends up getting at least one start this upcoming season. Let's go to Shane. I should also say, if Garoppolo is 100% healthy for all the games, then no, O'Connell won't get a start. From 1 to 10, what's your confidence level in the Raiders this season? I'm at a 5. Like, I can sit up here and make the argument why they could win double-digit games. They were 6-11 and last season. If your quarterback play can be better, and let's face it, Derek Carr did not even play like a top-20 quarterback last season. So if you can execute better from the quarterback position alone, the offense is talented enough. You blew five games with a 10-plus lead. If you win three of those games, you win nine. Like, most of the time, if you're leading by 10, you should probably win four out of those games. There's the argument. However, though, I can also make the argument that this team, without Jimmy Garoppolo, if he gets injured, you never know how the season's going to go. If the depth's not 100% there, it could be a bad season. So I'll go right in the middle, and I'll say five. Let's go to Mr. Michael Thompson. Mitch, since the staff is so unpredictable, what is a crazy move that Raider fans would hate you could see McDimmy and Zeke's making? Oh, man. So an unpredictable move. Raider fans would hate that McDaniels and Zeke's would make. Oh, man. Uh, let's go with Josh Jacobs not coming back to the Raiders. So because Josh Jacobs doesn't come back to the Raiders, they move on from him. Maybe a team, I don't know, offers him a deal. And because of that, then the Raiders try to go out and get Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook has been a name that's been actually mentioned to me before because Raiders running back coach uh, Kennedy Palomalu was previously with Minnesota. It's one of the reasons why they went out and got Amir Abdullah. So let's say crazy thing that Raider fans would hate. They don't bring back Josh Jacobs because they don't want to pay him money and instead decide to go get Dalvin Cook. That would be something that I think a lot of fans and myself would hate. Let's go to JMO H, a.k.a. Devil J. Any news on signing Kyle Van Noy? There is absolutely positively no news whatsoever. The only person that I know has a deal in place right now from a free agent standpoint, I know the Raiders offered Marcus Peters something, and that's only because I was talking to Graf, and Graf's pretty tied in with Peters and his crew. So there is a, there's at least a deal on the table. It's just he's going to wait to see how that ends up going down. But no, no new information on Kyle Van Noy. The Raiders, though, need to go out and get Van Noy. He'd really help out this defense. Shane, what rookie and veteran – is killing it in the OTAs. I would say from what I have heard thus far, like the top rookie at OTAs was Michael Mayer. Like people said Michael Mayer just looks like a totally different human being out there. Like they, you know, they're calling him baby Gronk for a reason. He's just like such a big dude. So I'll say Michael Mayer from that standpoint. And then what veteran has been killing it? I mean, Crosby looks great. I will say a young Raiders player told me that Crosby and Chandler Jones have done a really good job of being like the player coaches out there. But I mean, we all know Crosby's going to be that dude. I'll say Trevon Merrick's not really a veteran, but he is entering year three. He's uh, he's looked very good from what I understand. Let's go to Rich X Wolf. Will McDonald's be out if we are booty this season? I would say the only way that McDonald's is out is if the Raiders are legit like Adam Rank bad, right? Like, you're 0-10 to start the season. You finish the year with like three, four wins. If the Raiders have the opportunity to get the number one or number two overall pick, then I don't really see why you would keep, you know, Josh McDaniels, like why you would trust him to be able to make the right decision by getting that franchise quarterback. That's the only route that I see. Um that, that's probably the only route I see. Now, we mentioned it earlier, but again, we're doing a Hot Wings contest myself against Jermaine Illuminor. If you need the details, they are right here. Going to have a bunch of Raider fans there. It's going to be a hell of a time. Who knows? You might even see us in an Uber with Hellcat Q. No, Killer Cruising. My bad. I was going to say, I said Hellcat. I'm like, that's not it. Killer Cruising. What's your favorite kind of wing? We're doing a wing eating contest, Buffalo style wings. Now, me personally, if there's like some sort of like Asian style of wing, I'm all about it. If there is a honey barbecue, I love it. But if you're going to barcode, I recommend you try their peanut butter and jelly wings. Absolute fire. Let me know down in the comments your favorite kind of wing. Let's go to this one rolling in here from Jersey Boy Greaser. I am hoping Tyree and Crosby are this generation Alzado and Long. I think every single person is wishing that. And if Tyree Wilson can get healthy, now don't get me wrong, the Liz Frank injury, anytime I hear Liz Frank with a foot, it, it does. It scares the hell out of me. But Max Crosby has the ability to be the best defensive end in all of the NFL. Tyree Wilson has the ability to be a top 10 defensive end. At, like His athletic ability 
You watching how good he was in the Big 12 and before that injury, 61 tackles, 7 sacks. His athletic ability alone, like, people just, they don't make players like Tyree Wilson. I'm hoping that those two can be a dynamic duo, and if they are, it's really going to transform this defense. We can talk about linebackers all we want. We can talk about safeties, cornerbacks, the secondary. If you have a legit two players that can get double-digit sacks every single season, it makes your secondary and your linebackers look definitely a whole lot better.